All right, it is just about time to get into it. So they did drop a minor patch. And honestly, I was I was expecting this patch to be bigger. I thought we were going to get like a pretty major patch today, uh, especially since they delayed it a little bit. But it looks like it's just going to be a minor patch. What's up, guys? I'm going to get right into it because honestly, I don't want to waste any time. So let's see. Hey, gang, it's up here with the patch notes. Finally, there's a couple small changes, tweaks to numbers and some bug fixes that you should check out below. Remember, as always, this is a minor patch. Only the last digit has changed. <clears throat> there will be a major update coming with the release of Emma the Magnificent next week, along with some other stuff. So remember to check out the roadmap to get a glimpse of what's headed your way. So keep in mind, uh, this is not going to be the ranked patch. This is not going to be, you know, new characters. It's just going to be probably a couple of balance changes. I haven't seen it yet. I don't want to necessarily know what's going to be in the patch notes ahead of time because this sort of ruined the surprise. So. They're describing some changes to the high pick rate criteria. A specific character to weapon pick rate that is higher than 8.3, uh, which is essentially 1.5 per 18 per game, um, means that one character slash weapon combination is often found multiple times in a single match. If a pick rate exceeds 8.3 in top ranks, this indicates a high possibility of a problem, even if the win rate is low. In overall statistics, the pick rate is more loosely based on the free character rotation. Rapier, sorry, Kiara with Rapier and Shuichi with Dagger both have high pick rates and higher tiers, leading to their adjustments. Character weapon mode correction. Some characters have vastly different solo slash duo slash duo squad, or sorry, solo slash duo slash squad uh, rates with different weapons, so certain weapons can result in a low win rate in certain modes. Notably, Shuriken, Hedgen, and Dual Swords Yuki have low win rates in all three modes. This is difficult to adjust as they share weapons with other characters. In uh, in next week's update, uh, sorry, in next week's update, we'll be changing the current mode correction value from character to character weapon combination to help close the gap between these weapons or and these these types of, of weapons on these characters. So basically, the idea is they talked about this previously in in I think it was the last patch was when they brought this up. They, they basically said, like, character-specific weapon combinations are really hard to balance because if you just buff the character or, or nerf the character, it's going to mess up the rest of the weapons on that character. And, and similarly, if you just buff the weapon, it's going to mess up the other people that have that same weapon. So they're struggling with a way to do that. And instead of just nerfing or buffing specific characters and, like, increasing how much damage they do, say, in squads, they're going to be adjusting certain characters plus their weapons, like specific weapon and character combinations, which is a pretty a pretty ambitious undertaking, and it's going to make the game sort of harder to, you know, <clears throat> if you just get into the game and you're like, cool, I want to play Hedgen, and I want to play Shuriken Hedgen, you may not know that like, oh, well, Shuriken Hedgen is going to do 90% damage in squad, but Bow Hedgen is going to do 85% damage in squad, but if I played Hedgen in solo, I'd be doing 100% like it's really it can get really confusing So their concern is like how do we make this a reasonable change without Making the game way too confusing wouldn't it be better to adjust weapon stats? I mean there in my opinion there are some ways they could fix some of these issues by just changing weapon sets like I think to me I think the proper solution for Hedgen or at least a good solution for Hedgen would be to nerf like elemental bow because elemental bow is pretty overstated like nerf elemental bow and then buff hedgen like that would actually put hedgen in a better spot like it would, it would make shuriken better it would make bow hedgen about the same and that's what they're trying to do anyways so like i feel like there are some solutions to these problems but as the game gets bigger as you get more weapon types per character as you get more characters using more weapons you're gonna have more issues with people like, there's going to be way too much overlap at some point where they're going to have to resort to this sort of a solution. So I think this is a good idea. I just think this was inevitable, essentially. Like, we were going to have to get to this point eventually. We're just here already. Um, anyway, enough of that. We're going to go straight into the actual character changes. Fiora going to be getting more attack power per level. Her Q with full two shave stacks is going to be doing 10% more damage. And the W cool reduction is going to be going from 2 seconds to 4 seconds. And her E is going to get 10% more damage as well. And um, 
Hold on. So, so if I'm if I'm interpreting this right, if you pop, if you pop your two Shea stacks, it doesn't matter if you use your Q or your E. You're you're getting cooldown reduction on your W. Um, and if you do it after this patch, it's going to be doing more damage, and it's going to be dealing. Or it's going to be reducing the cooldown of that W by a bit more. Um, so yeah, that's basically the change. It's it's just a straight buff to Fiora. It's not a huge buff, but it definitely means that you could potentially be getting multiple Ws. It also means that Fioras are going to have to care more about uh, their two shade stacks and making sure that they're getting those two shade stacks uh, fully built up and then triggered. It also means that if you're opening with your W, if you're going like, you know, E auto W Q or something, that's a good way of actually keeping your, your damage up because if you're reducing your W by four seconds, you, if you're opening with your W, your W is going to get reduced again. You can W again soon after. So sh she's probably going to be a much better, like, yeah, like you said, sustained fighting character rather than just a burst character, which is pretty good. Like, I think that's probably a good change. Um, I don't think Fiora was necessarily that weak. I don't really think she needs a bunch of buffs, but I don't think this buff is like so, you know, overstated or, or heavy handed that it's going to make her broken or anything. I think this is a, a fine change. Um, anyways, Kiara. Oh, I hope we see some good Kiara changes. Her W is going to get the shield amount reduced from uh, mainly 260 at max strength down to 230. Uh, and the attack power ratio is increasing. Why? Why are we doing that? Uh, her E no longer occasionally disconnects immediately after hitting an enemy. Yay! Uh, but she's getting less max HP from her ultimate, and quite honestly, I couldn't be happier about that change because I felt that the the gigantic burst of HP that Kiara got right when she activated her ultimate was pretty dumb, and I didn't like it at all. Um, as someone who just got into this game a week ago, you have no idea what any of this will do, but you're excited for things. Nice. Honestly, it's exciting even if you don't know <laughs> like what's like how to compare it all to to the previous versions of these characters or compare them to the other you know characters in the game these changes are still really exciting like seeing changes like this it, it is exciting you think the idea is to hit the full tank build uh but not the damage build that makes sense that actually that actually does make sense because the full tank build is is the issue right like i i i personally despise the popular full tank Kiara build like I, I I truly truly hate that build. Like I think that build is is so problematic and has no place in this game so oh well oh well I, I hope these changes actually do help nerf the, the most problematic character in this game it was a summary yeah I am doing well um I hope you are too ISIL his roll range is being increased by one meter that's kind of cool you know that's that is kind of cool you feel the nerf on early game shield is kind of stupid for Kiara. She's useless till level six through seven and the shield's pretty much the only thing that keeps her alive. But that is from you when you played her. The thing is like, Kiara, yeah, Kiara's end game is her issue. Like, sorry, I'm gonna back up back to Kiara. Kiara's late game is her issue. Like, I don't think anyone would disagree with that. The, the, the thing about Kiara is that yes, she's very vulnerable in the early game, in the mid game, but as soon as she gets like her weapon built, and a couple of items built, she is actually just broken. And as soon as she gets some RNG items with her too, she is actually just broken. She's basically just bar none, the best character in the game. So, I mean, any nerfs are welcome at this point. This is the nerf I'm the most excited about. I think her, her R is just so unbelievably overloaded and overstated. So it's good that she's losing this. I don't get why she gets this extra HP in general, because like I could just keep like listing out the things that her R does. It's ridiculous that it does so much. But anyway, pretty frustrating to catch early CPH as most melee. I agree. I agree. I think that even though she has a weak early game, she is incredibly hard to actually punish early game because she has, like, her E is insane. It's, by the way, guys, can we talk about the fact that her E is a 1.5 second root? Like, a spammable 1.5 second root. There is very little CC in the game that is not an ultimate, that is a 1.5 second CC. Like, it's 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 crazy to me that that is like still okay. 
and beating the game. But anyway, enough about Kiar. Magnus is dealing 2% more damage in squad. The only change to Magnus this match. Uh, we have Shoichi. Gonna be dealing less damage on his E for just the rank, the, the early ranks. At the max rank, it's still 180. It's still the same. But going from 40 down to 20 on rank 1 and just a, a few minor changes for the, the, the intermediate ranks as well. Um, the funny thing is you might be going like, wait a minute. Why are we nerfing Shoichi? Like, what's going on? The thing about Shoichi, and you, mm, to, to me, I think Shoichi, I, I mentioned this in my tier list I just put out today, I think Shoichi is actually underrated in NA. I think NA is not really respecting how good Shoichi is in general. So I, I don't hate this nerf. Like, I'm not sitting here scratching my head going like, why is this happening? I genuinely think Shoichi is really good. Uh, and I, I think that this is fine. It's not such a big nerf that you're gonna be like, oh no, I don't have that extra 20 damage, like it's all over for me. Because, yeah, I think this is fine. Also keep in mind, his E is generally left at rank 1, so this is reducing it from 40 to 20, and that is relevant, because this is gonna be about where it stands the entire game until late game. Um, anyways, Sylvia. She has an increased base attack speed, thank god, because her base attack speed was pretty embarrassing. Uh, shift gears, her ultimate... It increases her defense. Wait, what? That's got to be a typo. Okay, I'm gonna make some some bold predictions. It's saying it's going from six nine twelve. I'm assuming it's going to six twelve eighteen. It's listed as six twelve one, but based on the math, I'm gonna assume this is six twelve eighteen. But I, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. I'm pretty sure that's what it's supposed to say. Her Q, so basically it's increased defense on bike mode. Her Q is going to be... Hold on. So her bike Q, yes! Okay, cool, yes! I love this, I love this, I love this. This is a fantastic change uh, to, to Sylvia. Her bike Q is going to be going uh, down by 0.5 second cooldown at all ranks, which means that her Q, if you open up with like... EQ, WQ, you can actually get that second Q off much faster before you have to uh, dismount the bike. You can finish your bike combo and get two Qs in before feeling like you're like sitting there going like, oh, I'm waiting for my second Q to come off. You can do it and it doesn't feel like a complete waste anymore. That's a great change. Also, the Q is going to be dealing even more damage. So this is a nice, actually very nice buff to Sylvia overall. I would not sleep on Sylvia anymore like if you're sleeping on sylvia still you should probably stop i think sylvia is going to be mid uh mid to slightly above average after this patch i genuinely think that so keep an eye out sisella gonna be dealing at two percent less damage in duo mode her q has been slowed down so much over time wait hold on am i crazy guys wait a second wasn't this a change that happened like last patch? Like, am I crazy? I feel like somebody's already in a decent spot before. I agree. It went from 1.5 to 1.3 last patch. Okay. Yeah, like I, I feel like they did these exact same changes last patch, but I guess they're just like making them even more, more uh, pronounced, I guess. So her Q is going to be slower. Again. Ooh, but yeah, man. This, this is scaring me. Okay, so it was damage dealt in squad mode, 85 to 82, defense per level increased, and her E length was taken from 1.5 down to 1.3. Okay. Yeah, I don't... Hmm. I agree that Sasala is strong, as, as probably... Like, I, I I would almost at this point consider myself a Sicilian because I've been playing her pretty much more than anything else uh, recently. Uh, hey, what's up, Thorn Angel? Uh, I agree that Sicella probably needs some nerfs, but the fact that they're nerfing Sicella more than they're nerfing Kiara Shukai Dylan kind of concerning me. Um, hmm. I don't know how I feel about these changes because I feel like I feel like you don't want to make her Q and her E feel terrible to use. If anything, you should probably just tone down the numbers, like not not the not the numbers on like how it works, but the numbers on like the damage. Uh, 
maybe this the stun duration on the E or something like I, I don't know this kind of change is just gonna maybe make her feel just clunky but man making her E only a 1.1 down from 1.3 it's pretty yikes we'll see oh yeah I guess there is a change to Shukai oh wow what a change to Shukai Oh my god, he's <laughs> that's so sad. <laughs> Nothing changed. Uh, but anyway, okay, well, they're changing they're changing Cicela by quite a bit. They're making it much harder to make her Q and E basically do anything. Uh, additionally, the cooldown reduction when shielding yourself or an ally is being taken down from 3 seconds down to 1.5. Projectile speed all around is being reduced. The length of the E is being reduced. And her Q is going to move slower. So I, I'm, poof, man, I'm getting sad about that. All right, uh, Shukai, he's going to be dealing less damage in duo, but other than that, he's just going to get more attack power per level because we needed a Shukai buff uh, to make this patch complete. And Zaheer, going to be dealing... Okay, that's interesting. So they're trying to make Zaheer W less of a one point wonder. Um, it's dealing less damage in the early ranks, but it's dealing more damage in the later ranks. So to translate this change, basically at rank 4 W, it breaks even. It's the same as it was before. But at rank 5, it's slightly stronger than it was before. But keep in mind, going from 40 down to 25 in the early ranks, that is gonna make you wanna maybe put points in your W. That being said, I don't think you necessarily wanna be putting points in your W because his Q max is just so good. I I don't know, this is gonna be weird. Also, Heart's movement speed is gonna be really low after this patch. They're, the only Heart change this patch is that Heart's movement speed is going from 3.05 down to three, which I think makes her the slowest character in the game now, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if they want you to use Sis E on allies give me a reason to make it heal or give a much better shield. No, I mean, that's exactly the thing is that they were nerfing that because it was almost too good. Uh, the, the point was that the seller could just sit there spamming her E on herself in, in a fight without ever having to commit it to an enemy and it would still be up soon afterwards because the cooldown reduction was too much. So you really didn't have to commit much to getting that free shield. Why nerf heart movement speed? I don't actually know. Um, but there it is. There it is. Uh, weapon changes. Torch is getting less HP regeneration. Statue of Soteria getting less HP regeneration in general, because that also builds off of Torch. Uh, and it's going to be getting less movement speed, which is a good change. Uh, I, I always felt that Soteria gave way too much movement speed. I thought Magnus was too fast with this weapon, so this is a good change. Pistol getting more skill amplification per level. Spicy change. Assault Rifle. Ooh, losing plus two Enad on us on AK-12, which, I mean, like, sure, that's that's slightly relevant, but it's not it's not that important. Uh, it's not it's not that big a deal. A little bit of an AK-12 nerf. Karn went in, going from 26 attack power up to 30, a pretty relevant buff. Vibroblade also going from 53 up to 57. Guys, there's been two patches in a row, I think now, where they've been buffing Vibroblade and Karn went in. These weapons should. You should be looking at these weapons a little bit more. I genuinely think that Dagger Jackie might be uh, something you should you should be paying attention to after these these changes. Like they, they're they're gonna keep creeping these these power levels up. People are gonna keep ignoring them until someone's like, wait a minute, we can actually just abuse this and, and make this work. So so pay attention to Carnwin, pay attention to Vibroblade. It, it keeps getting buffed. Crossbow, sniper crossbow. Range? I'm assuming that's vision range. Should Shoichi still go for Mount Sicer? Yes, probably. Uh, I don't think Crit Shoichi is particularly that amazing. Um, so yeah. Yeah, then Herping Sniper Crossbow again. I'm assuming this is vision range. I don't think it's... It never had 5 range to begin with, so I'm assuming this is vision range. The vision range is being taken down from 5 to plus 3.5 instead. Guitar changes. Ooh, Purple Haze nerf. Okay, I see that. See that, and I, I, I cry on the inside. But honestly, just want to say, uh, I was right. Anyway, no caster. Going to be dealing a less extra normal satisfaction with slightly less extra normal, and purple haze getting a fat nerf from 22 down to 19. Keep in mind, stairway to heaven. Now the highest spell amp on a guitar. I'm just going to point that out. But keep in mind, 
Purple Haze does still have about 30-ish more attack power, which is relevant. But keep in mind, Stairway, it sort of has more amp now. Not by much, but just by, just by a little bit. I still think Purple Haze will be pretty good after this change, though. Because that attack power is relevant. Bow. Elemental Bow nerf. Okay. I've been asking for this. I'm okay with this. Fail not. Buff. I've also been asking for this, and I'm okay with this as well. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, cool. I like these changes. Uh, glove. Bloodwing Knuckle HP being reduced from 300 down to 250. I love this change. Uh, the thing is, Bloodwing Knuckle... I don't know if you guys have been have been noticing how overused Bloodwing Knuckle is lately. There are Bloodwing Knuckle Hyuns and Dylans in like every game. I think Bloodwing Knuckle is legitimately overpowered. Uh, so I think this change is good. That being said, they're still ignoring the Mithril Gloves, and those have not been changed. The thing is, Bloodwing Knuckle is a great thing to hold on to until you get your Mithril Gloves. So, I wish they would also nerf Mithril Gloves as well, but we'll see. Harp nerf. Amp going from 42 down to 38. Good change. Hate Harp. Love this change. Uh, dual Swords changes. We're seeing Dioscuri getting a buff from 38 to 40 attack power. Loigor and Zar is getting an attack power buff from 30 up to 33, and Divine Dual Swords is getting an, an additional uh, attack power buff going from 38 up to 41. Armor changes. Actually, I want to go back to these real quick. I don't know if this was necessary. Really? I, I don't really know if this was necessary. Um, yeah. I'm trying to wrap my head around this and see, like, was this necessary? Especially, okay, especially the Dioscuri change. Like, I don't think this was necessary. It's for Yuki, I guess. I mean, they did mention that Yuki was performing very poorly, but, like, it was not Yuki that was holding dual swords and doing anything. It was, it was, it was Jackie. So if they want to buff dual swords Yuki, they needed to buff dual swords Yuki specifically, a la the way that they mentioned up here. This is not necessarily the route that I personally would take. Um, here, I can link you the patch notes because I don't have a patch command. That's a good idea, though. Here you go. Check it out. Armor changes. Beret. Yes. Oh, thank God. Beret change going from 13% down to 7%. A green should never have had 13% CDR to begin with. Is pretty dumb. However, this breaks my heart because I sit on Ballistic Helmet all the time. Ballistic Helmet is going to be going... 5% less CDR from 13% down to 8%. It's no longer the broken blue helmet that it was before. Um, this actually, this hurts me personally because I run Ballistic Helmet on Cicela day in and day out. I'm going to have to figure out if this is still worth sitting on or if you want to go for something else as an alternative. Either way, it's surprising to me that Chain Coif is keeping its 10% CDR because Ballistic Helmet, a blue helmet, is going down to 8% CDR. So I really wish they'd be more consistent and maybe they should nerf Chain Coif. Anyways, Handbok. Going Ooh, okay. Okay. I see you. I see you, game. They're, they're nerfing a handbok. It's going from 15% CDR down to 8%. It's kind of forcing you to go over to what is it? Uh, covert agent uniform if you want to actually have that CDR chest piece. Uh, you can't just sit on a handbok and wait for queen as easily anymore. So this is probably a good change. But it's getting a little more defense to compensate. So that's that's relevant, I suppose. Crusader armor. Losing 5 enad and... Wait, what is that? It's losing, so it's losing 5 enad, but the movement speed penalty is being reduced to almost a negligible amount. So it's a buff and a nerf. Um, but man, losing 5 enad, that's pretty significant. I'm not going to lie to you. It's a pretty big change. When's the patch? Should be tonight, I think. Uh, or tomorrow, not sure. Either way, Blazing Dress, losing 4 Enad, and a Rocker's Jacket is losing 0.1 out of combat movement speed. A very slight Rocker's Jacket nerf, which, this is my favorite chess piece in the game, and I think this is an okay change. Um, of all the stats on Rocker's Jacket to hit, this one offends me the least. The, the out of combat movement speed was very, very relevant, don't get me wrong, it was incredibly relevant. But I think this change is is warranted. I think it was almost too good before in terms of its out of combat movement speed, so this uh, this is fine. Uh, arm changes. Shah Jahan going from 350 down to 300. The universal slam it on everyone uh, arm piece is getting nerfed finally, I guess. Um, damn. 
We're seeing a flower nerf going from 9% down to 7% and we're seeing, <gasps> no, Buddha Cerebra. My One of my favorite accessories of all time, the green like pearl thing that you build just in the temple. The CDR is going from 10% down to 8% and the amp is being increased from 7% up to 8%. So keep in mind that Buddha Cerebra previously you didn't have to actually upgrade it to various Luxmea to get that full CDR. You could just sit on the Buddha Shira, you'd get the full CDR, and you'd only be losing 1% amp. Now you're getting the same amount of amp as Veritas Lux, but you're losing 2% uh, CDR. So keep in mind, the Buddha Shira getting nerfed, that's a 2% less CDR. You're getting, what is it, Ballistic Helmet nerfed? You're getting Beret nerfed? These are these like early game CDR pieces that you were able to 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 slam like without having to upgrade them and you're fine sitting on them they're actually addressing them and making you like forced to finish your items now <laughs> instead of just sitting on these very well statted um blues and greens and that's it that's actually going to cover the whole patch um some some questionable changes i'm very concerned about these Cicella changes maybe being too much i i feel like they're maybe not addressing the proper issues with Cicella, but you know we'll see when it actually comes out we'll see how how uh, awful these feel. Uh, my major takeaway is that Sylvia was actually going to be kind of nuts. Sylvia after this patch is going to be really strong. So keep in mind that Sylvia is a character. Maybe rev up the Sylvia builds. Get some practice in on them because she's going to be a lot stronger after the patch. This change is more relevant than you think. A Q max is going to let you combo your second Q in your combo way more consistently. That's a lot more damage. You're not going to be sitting there waiting for it to come off cooldown. So that's really good. Um, Additionally, these Kiara nerfs are much needed. I wish they'd be more heavy handed in them, but these are some much needed Kiara nerfs. And yeah, that's a uh, that's sort of it for the balance patch. I, what did you guys think of this one? Like, I'm curious what you guys have to have to say, because like I've been seeing what you guys have been saying in chat and kind of seems like we're all pretty much on the same page. But yeah, I'm curious if there's any any hot takes, any interesting ideas. But in any case, uh, that's actually going to be it for me. 